this is my DNS server and the easiest way to get to DNS management is either open server manager and launch the DNS management console from there or from the administrative tools you can launch the DNS management console from there, I've already got it open um, to enable DNSSEC on a zone you need to have that zone selected right click it DNSSEC and sign the zone do that it will launch this uh, little wizard. So at the welcome page simply click next. Now this is the very first time we've set this up so we're just going to select customize the zone signing parameters, click next. There will only be one key master and this will be it, It'll be the first one that we are creating, click next. Uh, the key signing key is a public private key pair that will be used to sign the zone signing key which we'll create in a minute. So click next and we will have the ability to create that key. Now I'm simply going to accept all the defaults, signing, key lengths, etc. And roll over and click OK. and that will create that key pair. Click next. So now I'm going to create a zone signing key which is used to um, create RR SIG records which you'll see in your forward lookup zone and uh, they're used to, to sign your record groups. Again I'm going to accept all the defaults. Um, if you wanted to you could change the key length from the standard 1024 and make it more secure if you wanted to but I'm just going to leave it on the defaults. Uh, I'm going to use NSEC3. Uh, an NSEC record is basically a secure way of responding to a record that doesn't exist. Uh, and they are cryptographically signed and that's why it's talking about salt length there. You can if you want to use the older version which is NSEC, but NSEC3 is more secure. Click next. And I'm going to enable the distribution of trust anchors for this zone so the trust anchors will be published into Active Directory. Uh, I'll talk about trust anchors again in a minute. Click next. And once again, I'm going to leave this on the um, default. Click next. And that zone will be signed and the relevant records created. So when the wizard's finished, simply click finish. You won't say anything new until you refresh the zone. So, how do I get that to my clients then? To do that, I've got to uh, let them know in group policy that they need to check for DNSSEC. Now, this is a computer policy. I'm going to create a new one on the root of the domain. You can put this on the default domain policy if you want to. I'm just going to create a new DNSSEC policy, it's a computer policy and then I'm going to edit that policy just maximize that, and where you want to be heading to is computer configuration policies, windows settings, name resolution policy now when it opens you'll see something similar to this so I'm doing it on a DNS suffix which is my domain name, so that's test.net and tick to enable DNSSEC and then tick to require DNS clients to check. Click update and remember scroll down and click apply which is usually hidden and everybody forgets to do and then wonder why it doesn't work. And there you'll see in the name resolution policy table it will publish testnet. You can simply close that down. Now if you wanted to check that the settings were there click on show all and there you go that's what's being set by that policy now of course group policy will not take effect uh, until the policy is refreshed so on this machine I'm just going to force group policy updates
tool back in my DNS console you'll see now if I expand trust points and I expand the walk down you'll see I've got two DNS key records here that have create, been created as trust points. Now all the trust point is is basically it's a record that says everything north of this in the DNS structure you can trust. That's all it is, regardless of what the documentation tells you, that's what it's for. So to do some testing, this first command will make sure that the policy is affecting you and, and you are required to check that your DNS records are signed and that's get DNS client NRPT policy and what you are looking for is that the DNS sec validation required is set to true. Now remember we have two trust anchors we can see those as well if we do get DNS server trust anchor uh, against our domain name we should see the two records there and that's what we saw in the GUI console earlier on. Another can, command that you can use to test is get DNS server trust point. So if we actually force a DNS lookup then and see what it's doing, I can use the PowerShell command resolve DNS name and then I'm going to give it the name that I want to resolve. I've got a host on my LAN called LAN host and the type of record I want to look at is the A record for that and then I'm going to tell it to use my DNS server and there we have information to say that that record has been signed, who it's been signed by etc. Now you may see in some documentation to run exactly the same command but with a DNS sec OK on the end however for all intents and purposes it just returns exactly the same information that's us done. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to come and visit us at www.pnetlive.com.